Hey guys, it's Channel Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, I've got another uh, different video to show you guys. And obviously, you know, when we do IRL videos, it's a bit of a special topic. For this video, I'm going to be showing you guys this external GPU, this portable graphics card that is, well, not only portable, but it's also upgradable. What I have here is the eGPU, external GPU. This is the SGW Zone Gaming and AI Box eGPU. And uh, first of all, I do want to thank SGW Zone for sending me this uh, to review. Uh, an external GPU is exactly what it sounds like. It is a GPU, a graphics card, but instead of putting it into your PC, in the PCIe slot or something like that, it is, well, external. It runs outside of your system. And most eGPUs, like this one, they use a Thunderbolt connection. Uh, it's, it's like a USB-C port, but it's uh, a little bit different. Okay, so before we get too much further in this video, uh, shortly after this video was done editing, I got an update from the manufacturer that the eGPU has been completely redesigned with this much newer and cleaner look. And I really like this newer design as well. But more importantly, it got a really cool new feature added to it that makes a huge difference. So not only does it still support Thunderbolt 3 and 4, but it also got Oculink support in the form of a user replaceable and upgradable module that you can add to it. And Oculink is so much better than Thunderbolt 3 and I will explain why it's important later in the video. These are usually, they're not meant to usually replace desktop graphics cards. They are actually meant to uh, go along with, you know, laptops or mini PCs and stuff like that. Or even like handheld devices so that you can boost the graphics performance in those devices. Now, this particular model they sent me, it has, let's look at the ports first. It has the power port, uh, display port and two HDMI ports and a USB port on this side and then two more USB ports on this side. So a total of three USB ports and two Thunderbolt ports. Now, one of these Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt ports will be used to connect to the PC so that you know I can use the graphics card. The other one, well, it's, it's a free port, uh, Thunderbolt or USB-C device. And basically you can use this as not just a graphics card, but also a dock for other stuff. Now this particular model, the graphics card inside of this is an AMD 6600M, but they do come in two versions. So the first version is the 6600M that they sent me, but you can also get this in an RTX 3070 as well. So that's, uh, that's up to you. But here's the cool thing, and this is the thing that sets this apart from other uh, eGPUs, is that... Um, Yes, you can, when you get this, when you order this, you can pick between the AMD or NVIDIA graphics card, but you're not stuck with just those two options. You can pick one of them to start, but the cool thing about this eGPU compared to most other eGPUs is that you can actually, in fact, you're out, you can actually open this up. And I know you can deal with a lot of eGPUs, but this particular eGPU, uh, Kind of had to like remove the fan and heatsink to show you, but underneath this, and it's not that hard to remove. I just I didn't want to mess with this right now. But underneath it is the graphics card. But what's special about this graphics card compared to other eGPUs is that instead of being like soldered to the main board or kind of like built in and like not replaceable, this uses an what's called an MXM graphics card. MXM graphics cards are Essentially, they're almost like, I guess the best comparison would be they're almost like M.2 SSDs. You can easily remove them and replace them. It's like a, almost like a removable standard for graphics cards would be like a very, a very nutshell way of describing it. So what that means is, you know, down the road, if you want something different than the 6600M or the 3070, and you want to upgrade your graphics card, well, the MXM standard has been on for a while. So if you can find a better MXM graphics card, just open this up, put it in, and voila, you've just upgraded your eGPU. Okay, so now we have the eGPU powered up and 
powering the mini PC. So right there, that is my Intel 6th Gen NUC. It's called the Skull Canyon NUC. It's uh, the specs on that aren't you know the greatest. It's a Core i7 CPU, 6th Gen though, like the first Sky Lake generation, uh, and a graphics card inside. Well, it's just integrated graphics. It has um, Intel Iris Pro 580, which at the time was actually pretty decent from Intel. It was one of their best integrated GPUs. But like today, it, it's not going to be able to run many modern games at all, uh, especially not on a 4K monitor that you see here. So that by itself, not great for gaming. But now that this is plugged in, and let's open up Task Manager real quick. So you could see it still has it still has the Iris Pro 580 right there, but it has now a second GPU, the AMD Radeon RX 6600M, which is a much better graphics card than the uh, Iris Pro 580. Uh, and you can see one other cool feature is that this has a little screen on it when it's powered up. And it actually comes with a program that you can use to customize what's on that screen. Now, this program is still a little bit, seems to be a little bit early in development still, kind of like a early version or uh, not final version yet. A lot of this stuff, it's not like fully translated yet. Uh, some of it's still in uh, in Chinese, but some of it's also in English. So I would say like it's probably like an early version of the software, but it works. So right now I have it set to like display my CPU temperature there. Uh, Let's set it to the CPU usage uh, and then confirm. So see right now it says 4% of the CPU is under use. Now, the RX 6600M does have enough VRAM to support infinite at high settings. Uh, at ultra settings, it does go over a little bit the recommended. But again like so far at least based on just the main menu this is the first time i'm really testing this as well just based on the main menu it doesn't seem like there's a difference between low and high settings as far as frame rate goes wow it actually put me like in the middle of a match in in a bot boot camp all right wow okay i just want to say like I'm not going to call anyone out in this lobby, but I just joined and like I, I joined a losing match in bot boot camp. I, I've never seen that before. All right. So the frame rate in game is uh, just a little bit above 30 FPS. All right. So as you just saw, performance in game was not great, but that is because, most likely, because I was running at a crazy resolution and, you know, exp on a Thunderbolt connection, not a full PCIe connection. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this eGPU, after the redesign, now has Oculink support through a replaceable module, which just goes to show how upgradable this GPU is, this eGPU. Not only can you replace the graphics card, but you also give it Oculink. Oculink is a competitor to Thunderbolt, but Oculink is a lot faster and better than Thunderbolt. So whereas Thunderbolt 4 maxes out at about 5 gigabytes a second in bandwidth and speed, Oculink maxes out at about 16 gigabytes a second uh, for its uh, speed. So that's a lot more bandwidth there for higher resolution gameplay, which results in also better frame rate and performance in the game. So let's turn the resolution down to something probably more reasonable, what this was meant to do. Uh, I'm going to do 1080p. And let's see how well this game runs at 1080p. Uh, so, you know what? Let's just jump straight to high settings. Because I'm pretty sure the resolution I, I did w was a significant bottleneck. But now I should be able to do uh, maybe 1080p like ultra settings. So l let's give that a try. Okay, here we are in game again. And right now the frame rate is a solid 60 FPS. My, my monitor is only 60 hertz. So I'm, there's really no point in me going above... Uh, 60 FPS, but yeah, solid 60 FPS at 1080p resolution and ultra settings. And I'm sure I could probably turn on ray tracing as well, and it wouldn't affect the frame rate at all. So, yeah, that's just basically 
uh, a little bandwidth issue with a Thunderbolt 3 port. Like I said, it is not the graphics card not being to handle the, um, the higher resolution. Okay, so that basically wraps up for this video. So to sum it up, this eGPU is actually really great. It's portable. It may not be the smallest one or slimmest one out there, but it is also upgradable, which basically makes this future-proof compared to like other eGPUs out there. Now, MXM graphics cards, they, they tend to be a little bit more difficult to find and maybe a little bit pricier, but the option is out there. And with that, you can continuously upgrade this for pretty much as long as the MXM standard exists. So, yeah. Uh, now, like I said, because this runs on the Thunderbolt 3 standard, the it, it only maxes out at 40 gigabits per second for its speed. So, there is some bandwidth limits. And because of that, you will struggle to run... Uh, games at like 4k resolution and it doesn't matter like how like high quality the game settings are it could be low it could be ultra it's, it's just it's just bottlenecked at 4k so if you have like a, a older laptop or like a mini pc or anything with a thunderbolt port and you want to upgrade the graphics card well you know a lot of devices like that the graphics cards are usually soldered or you know, built in and they're not replaceable, they're not upgradable. But with something like this, like the SGW Zone eGPU, then you can actually upgrade your graphics card, so to speak, by using the Thunderbolt 3 port and this eGPU. You can breathe new life into pretty much any any machine, any uh, any computer. You can give it a much better graphics card. You can, you know, like that 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 in mini that Intel mini PC I used it, it was like, it, it's really old now, and it, it's not going to be to run like modern games at all. But once I use this, suddenly I could run Halo Infinite at max settings, but at 1080p. I could probably do like 1440p, and that probably would have been fine as well. But, you know, I would never have been able to do that without this on that PC. This literally like, uh, gives it a huge performance boost. So... If you're in the market for something like that, you should definitely check this out. Uh, there's no pricing information on this just yet, but you can subscribe and follow to uh, SGW Zone's Indiegogo page. They'll be launching it soon, and you could uh, you know, subscribe for a, a notification right now whenever uh, their campaign goes live. I'll put the link in the description down below. Uh, so aside from that, hopefully you guys found this video to be interesting. And if you have any questions about this or any thoughts to share, just uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but aside from that, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.